Welcome back, everyone, for another deep dive. Today, we're diving into the world of calendula. You know, that bright, sunny flower you see everywhere? Turns out it's not just pretty to look at. It's been used medicinally for centuries. Yeah, it's really interesting how calendula, or pot marigold, as it's sometimes called, pops up in healing traditions across the globe, going way back. We're lucky enough to have excerpts from this article, The Healing Power of Calendula, Nature's Potent Medicine, to guide our deep dive today. It really gets into all the amazing things this little flower can do. And one thing that really stuck out is its anti-inflammatory power, thanks to these things called flavonoids. Can you tell us more about flavonoids? Well, flavonoids are powerful antioxidants found in lots of plants, but calendula is especially packed with them. Basically, they act like little bodyguards, going wherever they're needed to reduce inflammation, whether it's on your skin after a nasty sunburn or even inside, like if you have an upset stomach. So it's like they calm things down wherever there's trouble. Exactly. Think of them as tiny firefighters rushing to put out inflammation before it gets out of control. I like that analogy. And speaking of calming things down, this article talks about calendula being a rock star when it comes to wound healing. Like, hmm. it can even help with scars. What makes it so good at that? Well, a couple of things. First off, calendula's got these amazing antimicrobial and antifungal properties, which basically means it helps prevent infections. Antimicrobial. No. Antifungal. For those of us who don't speak science, what exactly does that mean? Right. Sorry. Antimicrobial just means it can stop those tiny microbes like bacteria from growing and multiplying. Yeah. And antifungal. Same idea, but for fungi, like what causes athlete's foot? And those things love to take advantage of wounds, right? Ah, uh, that makes sense. So it's kind of like a two-in-one deal then. Fighting off those invaders while also speeding up healing. Exactly. And a way it speeds up healing is pretty cool. You see, calendula has these compounds that actually help your body produce more collagen, which is like the building block of your skin. More collagen means faster healing and less scarring. It's kind of incredible. Wow. So it's like a little wound healing factory. Yeah. We've talked about skin, but this article also mentions calendula being used for things like ulcers, gastritis, even diarrhea. That seems like a big leap from skin issues. What's the connection? It is a bit of a leap, yeah. But when you think about those anti-inflammatory properties, it starts to make sense. It's like what's good for the goose is good for the gander, right? Or in this case, what's good for a sunburn is good for your gut. So the same stuff that calms down a rash can also soothe your stomach, whether you put it on your skin or drink it in tea. You got it. People have actually been drinking calendula tea for digestive issues for ages, long before we figured out all the sciencey stuff. And turns out it can be really helpful for all sorts of tummy troubles. Like what? Give us the specifics. Well, let's say you overindulge a little. You know that feeling when your stomach is just not happy with you? Oh, yeah. I know that feeling all too well. Calendula can really help with that. All those anti-inflammatory properties go to work on your gut, calming things down, easing bloating, things like that. It's pretty amazing. It's like a warm hug, but for your stomach. <laughs> so we've got this plant that's great for your skin, helps heal wounds faster, and can even settle an upset stomach. Is there anything calendula can't do? Seriously. Well, I wouldn't say it's magic or anything, but it does have a pretty impressive resume. And speaking of its many talents, this article also mentions calendula being used for women's health, especially when it comes to that time of the month. Oh yeah, like for cramps and maybe even helping to regulate your cycle. What's the deal with that? Right, so those anti-inflammatory and muscle relaxing properties we talked about, the same ones that are great for sore muscles can also work wonders on menstrual cramps. So it's like a natural pain reliever. But without all the side effects you sometimes get with the over-the-counter stuff. Exactly. And because it's so gentle, a lot of people find it really helpful. Now, when it comes to regulating cycles, that's where things get a little tricky. What do you mean? The article made it sound pretty promising. It did. And there are tons of people out there who swear by it. And honestly, there's a long history of calendula being used for that very purpose. But... We need more research to say for sure how well it works. We've got the ancient wisdom, but we're still waiting on modern science to fully back it up. So it's like, we know it's been used that way forever, but we need more studies to really understand how and why it works. Exactly. And that's something to keep in mind with a lot of herbal remedies. There's this amazing wealth of knowledge passed down over generations, but it's important to approach things with a balanced perspective oh, yeah. to see what science can tell us. Respect the traditions, but also keep asking questions. So bottom line, when it comes to calendula and periods, it's not a guaranteed fix, but maybe worth looking into for people who want to try a more natural approach. Definitely. 
And as always, it's best to chat with your doctor or a qualified herbalist before you start using any new herb or supplement, just to be safe. They can make sure it's right for you and won't mess with any medications you're taking. Safety first, good advice. Okay, so far we've covered skin, wound healing, digestion, women's health. It's kind of mind-blowing when you think about it. What else can this plant do? Oh, there's a lot more to explore. Like, did you know researchers are looking into calendula for oral health? There's even some very early research, like super early, hinting at possible anti-cancer properties. Hold on, anti-cancer, that's amazing. What's the latest on that? Yeah, it's definitely exciting stuff, but we gotta be careful not to get ahead of ourselves. This research is still in its infancy, you know? But even the possibility is really interesting, right? It really is. So before we wrap things up, what are the key takeaways about calendula our listeners should remember? Well, I think the biggest thing is just how versatile it is. Calendula has been used for centuries by all these different cultures for so many different things. And as we learned today, we can use it on our skin. We can use it internally. Don't forget those flavonoids. Ah. Uh. Like tiny little superheroes fighting inflammation wherever it pops up. Right, exactly. It's like the gift that keeps on giving, honestly. And while, of course, more research is always a good thing, I think it's safe to say that calendula has earned its place in the natural medicine cabinet, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. It's a perfect example of how ancient wisdom and modern science can actually work together. You know. I couldn't agree more. It's like this return to our roots, in a way, as more and more people are looking for natural ways to take care of themselves. It's a beautiful thing. So in a world that's embracing natural remedies, do you think calendula has what it takes to be a real player in the future of medicine? That's the million-dollar question, isn't it? What do you think? Well, after this deep dive, I'm convinced calendula is definitely one to watch. Me too. This has been a fascinating conversation. It really has. And on that note, We'll leave you all to ponder the power of calendula. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive, everyone. We'll see you next time for another fascinating exploration.